folks, and welcome to this week's show. Uh, today's guests, uh, backed by popular demand, we've got Ian, and oh. we've got and we've got Colin. How are you doing? <laughs> and as you can tell by the background, no, we're not doing the Clash or Two Tone. We're actually going to be doing the songs of Dexies or the albums of Dexies and Dexies Midnight Runners, same sort of thing, if you like. And we're going to review the six albums now. Interestingly. Before we start, we we could have went years, really. We could have done Kevin Kevin Rowland's other two solo albums, The Wanderer, and uh, what, was his, what was his other album called again? Uh, uh, it's My Beauty was that's his, right. uh, his uh, first solo album. That's right, a terrific album. Um, we could have done My Beauty as well, which is arguably more of a Dexys Midnight Runners album as well. It's a great covers album. If you haven't heard it, go and check it out. It's a terrific album. We could have we could have done that as well, but we've just stuck to the officially titled De Dexys albums at the minute. So let us know your thoughts on that as well, because they are certainly my beauty's excellent album. Uh, right, folks. So before we start, let's just sort of talk. How how did you get into Dexys or Stroke Dexys Midnight Runners? Ian, how did you get into them? Um, top of the pops, basically. I'd uh, I'd missed I'd missed Gino and the first album completely. So the first thing I knew about it was um, Come On Eileen. And, uh, you know, I just blew us away. It, uh, it was a massive deal at the time. And it I can't remember how many weeks it was, at, like in number, it was number one, wasn't it? Uh, I can't remember how long, but it was just uh, unbelievable. It, it just, uh, every it sort of gripped everybody at the time. And it was it was completely different to everything that was out there. And uh, I know it's overplayed, but um, it's still one of the, you know, one of the, one of the greatest uh, pop songs, pop hits that uh, that I can think of. It's it. I, I, I was big into the um, the whole Dexy sound at that time with the strings, the the, the horns, and I felt that that was my introduction to Dexys, and that to me that. Lineup was um, was peak kind of Dexy sound, um, and I think the at that point they didn't they introduced strings into it, and it really sort of embellished everything. And and the, and that song in particular, um, uh, "Come on Eileen," it's it's really led by the strings, isn't it? You know, it's like probably not many other songs that have been that where if you took the strings away, it would kill the song. You know, it wasn't just background strings. It was really kind of driving there. Um, so, yeah, overplayed, but I still love it. Like, yeah. uh, I, so uh, the, the next one, I think, was um, I, I got the Gino album, which was um, basically a compilation of all the singles that, that, that they'd had from kind of the round about the first album era which was a really good album. Um, I don't have that one anymore, Like, but um, it was the A-sides and B-sides of all the singles and had some great uh, instrumentals like Soul, Soul Finger. Yep. Um, uh, and then eventually I got into um, the, 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 the first album, which I thought was, was fantastic. Um, but that was, that was kind of my introduction to it. And I, I, over the years, I've just got into into more and more of the uh, back catalogue. Yeah. Not that there was a, not that there was a great deal of. Uh... No, it's not the most extensive back catalogues, is it? <laughs> Colin, I think we discussed this on the single show. But go on, give us a quick quick uh, over overview again. Well, it was essentially through Gino um, and hearing Gino and thinking, hold on, this is different. This is a different kind of sound. Um, I think two tone was very big at the time, but it certainly deviated from. Uh, the sort of two-tone bands that were uh, were big at the time. I thought it had something different about it. So when Gino came along, that was the thing that opened my eyes and thought, Hello. I, I think I was 12 at the time, something like that. I thought, this, this is a bit different. And from that point forward, it would have been the sort of hits that came off that, that first album. Uh, and from then on, um, as Ian was saying, you know, the strings sort of give a real, you know, we'll talk about the second album, we'll come on to that. Uh, strings give a real feel to it. But I was sort of dragged in by the horn sound. Uh, the horn sound, I thought, was different. Not the sort of thing you'd see 
uh, every day on top of the pops. And I thought this Lara cut above, and uh, I suppose that was my that was my way in, really. And um, the, the sort of band that uh, I haven't grown tired of. You know, there, there are bands that you you sort of, you know, I'm in my mid fifties now. And bands that sort of come and go, and you sort of ignore them for a few years. But but Dexes have always been there. They've um, I've, I've never sort of grown tired of them and what have you. But for me, it's the horns more than the strings. But certainly the strings, which I'm sure we'll talk about, uh, did enhance sound, you know, terrifically as well. Yeah, and for, same for me. Uh, it was uh, it was Gino, and obviously the first album, which I absolutely loved. Um, without giving too much away, and again, I was massively into punk rock. I was into sort of into the two tone movement and the rude boy thing. But Dexys were definitely not that. They were more of a soul sort of band. You know, they had the whole brass thing going on. It was very different. I know they were on the tour for a short while on the two tone tour, but they, were, they weren't really. You could see the connections, but they weren't really in that sort of category. You couldn't shoehorn them into that sort of thing. You know, they were, they were very very different, uh, and it was for me. For me, they, they just stood out. But the first album, which we'll go into, was a real sort of game changer. Very, very different. Absolutely loved it. And from then on, I, I loved everything that they've done. So for me, they're a, they're a massive band. They're probably in my top 10, 15 favourite artists. If I had to sort of go down there, name your favourite bands, they're, they're in there. They're in the, they're in this in the shout, as it were. So I think they're fabulous. I really do. I love the constant change as well. So... Right, let's go through it then, folks. So before we do all this, all the ranking of the whole, the big six, if you like, I'm going to just quickly show you on the screen here the album ranking. I've had a slight change here, but we'll uh, we'll go through that. So as you can see, folks, the five stars to Masterpiece, four and a half, I've gone classic. <laughs> because, you know, it should be if it's four and a half, so it's going to be a classic album, really. Four is excellent, three and a half is very good, three good, Two and a half fair, two weak. We, we won't be seeing these, I'm sure. One and a half very poor, one awful. And 0.5, don't bother. We don't get many of them on the show. I don't bother. Had a couple, but it won't be the case this week. So there we have it. Those are the album rankings. We're going to go around. We'll start with you, Ian, today. And Colin and then myself. So if we're going to start at number six, what have you got in at number six? Number six, I've got um, Let the Record Show, um, which is kind of subtitled Dexys Do Irish and Country Soul. Um, so what, strictly speaking, it wasn't Dexys being Dexys, it was Dexys doing a different style. Um, and I think it's a good album um, of covers and traditional Irish tunes um, done in Dexys style. Um, great, great sound to it. Uh, the return of ever, the, the, you know, the, the, the lineups ever change, and it was a return of um, Helen O'Hara, I think, on yeah. this one. Yeah. Or Helen Bovington, as she's known. He, I think he, he renamed half the band's name to make them sound more Celtic. Like, you know. <laughs> um, it doesn't get any more Celtic than O'Hara, does it? <laughs> <laughs> O'Hara, oh, um, yeah, yeah, O'Hara, oh, yeah, me. Go on. I've, um, uh, my favourite is um, is Women of Ireland, like the first, the opening tune. I just love it. It's an instrumental. Again, um, I, th I think it's a great uh, traditional strings um, Irish folk song. But what um, what uh, uh, surprised me when I first heard it because I, I wasn't, I didn't know that song um, until I heard heard it on this album. Um, I'd really been a, a fan of the Christians, at, at, you know, way back. I must have been the nineties. And the second album, uh, Color, they had the, the, the opener was uh, called Words, and um, it's basically this song, but it's rewritten. And and I lo absolutely love Words, you know, I absolutely love the song. So um, I'd never realised it was based, you know, the tune was based on a traditional Irish song. So that's probably why it's it stood out at the time of being quite different, you know. Um, there's a couple of tunes there on the on the album that uh, Brian Ferry covered, Carrick Fergus and Smoke Gets In Your Eyes. And I, I was going to mention that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
He's a massive <laughs> fan, very fan. Uh, so I, you know, I love them song. I probably still prefer um, Berry's covers of them, but um, they're still very good uh, versions that uh, that he does. I'd say this was an album I'd occasionally play and enjoy, but like it's not going to be something I play regularly, you know. But uh, overall, it's a, it's a good good album of covers. Um, you know, I'd recommend it. Um, highlight songs, as I've mentioned, Women of Ireland, um, To Love Somebody, uh, Grays and the Grass, Carrick Burgess, both sides now. You wear it well, although not as good as um, Rod. It's Rod not, Bruce. no, it's not. But um, yeah, so I, I've given that a three star. Yeah, so it's a good album. Colin, how yeah. about you then? Okay, well, I've chosen, and again, well, no, I'll save the, I'll save the star rating. Uh, to the end, uh, but I've got one day I'm going to soar as my uh, number six album. I mean, um, this is a it's a good collection, a good collection of songs. The so I don't want to be too critical. I don't just want to start by being critical because it is, it's got some great songs on it. Uh, I like Incapable of Love, and I'm always going to love you. Um, and I saw them do this uh, live. When they came back, there was a tour that uh, accompanied them, and I saw them play at the um, Shepherd's Bush Empire, uh, I think. And um, You were talking I, about Lamar. I, I, that was my anecdote. You know, I've got my notes here. One of my anecdotes is oh, I met Mark Lamar. Hey, stealing all our banter, isn't he? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I I was a smoker at the time and nipped out for a cigarette and Mark Lamar was having one at the same time. And uh, he said to me, what do you think of the new songs? And I said, no, I like them. I think they're really good. But I'm notoriously bad at judging an album unless it's sort of six months old at least or something like that. Um, although one of the albums we're going to talk about, I'm sure, is, is less than six months old. But um, the... Um, I thought they were good songs. I still, I still be believe that. But I think the uh, criticism, and I think the criticism that he had was only there was only maybe about three really standout songs, uh, and, and the rest were just just sort of of good. That that was uh, Marlon Mar's impression, and I'm beginning to sort of uh, go in his direction a little bit now. Um, I find it a bit one paced as an album. I don't think there's a variation that you get in some of the other some of the other albums. Um there's something there's something about this one. The, the the songs just have sort of one word titles. I don't know whether Kevin Rowland was sort of getting bored with naming songs by then, whether he couldn't put the effort in or what have you. <laughs> um but it's just just um I I don't think this has some of the glory that the, the other albums have. Despite all that, I'm still giving it three stars. You know, this is still a three-star album, despite what sounds sort of relatively relatively critical. Um, and I think uh, possibly uh, the, the songs came out, um, some of them didn't come out too strong live. Others, um, this is when he was sort of singing in duet with a female vocalist whose name... Uh, escapes me. Was it Madeline? I forgot her surname now. She's very good, actually. Yeah, um, those work really well live. Actually, the others not so well. But this is still a three-star album, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, right. Well, okay, that's interesting. Well, my number six is "Let the Record Show." Uh, same as Ian, actually. A lot of the same sort of stuff, really. Um, it's 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 a very good album. I think there's a there's an awful lot to it in terms of in, in terms of the positives. Uh, apparently, they were going to do this album in eighty four, eighty five, and it was to be called Irish, <laughs> and was going to include Carrick Fergus and Cur of Kader and Women of Ireland. Uh, but then Dexys broke up not too long afterwards, and uh, I didn't realise until I was just checking this out. Helen O'Hara actually did an album called A Night in Ireland. I've got a book. I still need to read it actually. In, in 98, of which three of the same songs are on it. For me, it's definitely a late night album or an album you put on in a bath, that sort of thing, you know. Uh, and Ian rightly said, yeah, Ferry did two of the songs. And I, I probably agree. I think Ferry did better versions. 
I've, I've written a few notes here about some of the songs. Women of Ireland, I've just got, it's fantastic. It sets the mood. I like the interpretation of the BG song, To Love Somebody. Um, is it Cura of Kildare? I always get the pronunciation of these wrong. It starts off great, and then this lady comes on and over sings on it. And I just thought it would be better if just he'd sang on it. I, I, I absolutely love I'll Take You Home Again, Kathleen. That's probably my favourite song on the album. Always makes me laugh because my uncle Des used to sing that to his wife, <laughs> to my auntie Kathy, you know, when he'd come in and he'd had a few drinks. <laughs> and again, though, if you think about it, that fits in perfectly with the whole culture uh, and with this sort of album, if you like, the whole country and Irish thing. It, it goes hand in hand with alcohol, doesn't it? To a point, you know, without stereotyping and all the rest of it, it does sort of fit in with that idea of going out, having a few drinks, having a sing. And uh, it fits in perfectly with that. I just think it's a fabulous song. I really do. I like the album. I don't think it's as good as My Beauty. I think My Beauty is absolutely mm. fantastic album. Uh, would be a four and a half star album for me, My Beauty. This, on the other hand, I've given it three and a half. I think it's a really good album. I really like it. Like Ian, I don't play it very often. Put it on every now and again. I, I think the production's fabulous on it. But um, it's not something I blast too often. But... Good album cover. Even their worst album for me, three and a half stars. So there we have it. There's my number six. Ian, what have you got in at number five? Number five. Um, I was just saying that the, the let the record show it's a good album cover. Yes. I've got, I've got an issue with some of their album covers, Lee, but we'll go on to that later on. Um, number five, I've got um, The Feminine Divine, which is just kind of hot off fairly hot off the press isn't it it's i don't know how many months it's been out but um it's it's pretty it's pretty new isn't it um this one's um an album of two halves um it's a very good album not two halves in a in a good and bad way two halves in a different mood style um i think it works the side is all kind of upbeat soul probably would you describe it Northern Soul or? I'd describe it as Philly. I think right. yes, Northern, Northern with a bit of Philly to it. It's definitely got that. that yeah, yeah. Music, yeah. And it's, the, the side B is kind of a, a electronic groove. Um, it's it's completely different, isn't it? You know, but yeah. I think it makes it the album quite interesting because um, you, you're not you're not kind of. Not bored, but you've got a completely different feel halfway through, and it, it, both both sides work very well. Um, I think they're very good songs. Weird videos. Um, <laughs> I, I'm not keen on the one where he's dancing you know, through the alleyway. On um, right, so. I I just don't. It it just makes us cringe a little bit. Like I don't don't know. I just don't like the don't like it very much. Um, but the songs, you know, I think they're, I think they're really good. Yeah, there's one video of them walking down the street, aren't they? And he's got that very loud red suit yeah, on. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a bit like grand old dancing <laughs> sort of thing. You know? But um, no, I mean the uh, the songs themselves. I think they're, I think they're very good. Um, I went to see them a few months ago, um, and it's actually the first time I've ever seen them. Uh, I missed out on that gig that Colin was talking about. Yeah, I saw them twice on that too. Uh. Gore was there, but I was supposed to be going to that. And um, I was annoyed that I missed that gig. So this was the first time I'd seen them. And I'd listened to the album enough to kind of know the songs, so that that helped. But I thought it worked really well on stage, you know. I, I, um, I thought it was a bit tammy, you know. The, uh, the, the, the It's done like a... a loosely like a play but um i thought it re worked really well they did that the at the whole album and then they went they went and did a lot of um tour IA album after that mm. um it's it's all about uh kevin kevin's attitude to women and past and what he feels like now and in the future um i think um this there's some there's some really um catchy catchy uh songs on it and one one that, that's running over me my head is um the uh, the goddess rules you know that um 
it's like a kind of uh, electronic uh, kind of prince um, yeah. dirt, dirty vibe yeah you know yeah it it's, does yeah yeah it's really catchy um and i love it um and it's quite uh, uh, quite effective the, the 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 girl talking over it telling demanding what what the rules are <laughs> I, think, I think it's really really good it's um, got like a dominatrix feel to yeah, it doesn't uh, it? <laughs> it, it kind of uh, it kind of hooks you in that it's 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 an interesting <laughs> song to put it that way um and the feminine divine that's a that's um very it, it, it's a really well bass led song um I, I really enjoy that um i think Overall, I'm a little bit disappointed that it's it's not a big Dexy sound. So you you have got um, some you know horn horns and uh, strings on it, but there are some songs where it's almost played on the um, like synth kind of sound, and I just think that's not Dexy's, you know. So that's that's why I, I put it at number five. But uh, I've I've given it three and a half stars. Yeah. Okay, so it's a very good album. Colin, then what have you got at number five? Uh, well, one that uh, has already been discussed, and that's uh, Let the Record Show. Uh, it's probably not a great deal more I can add that uh, you two haven't, although one thing you haven't mentioned, either of you, was Grazing in the Grass on... Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Let the Record Show, which, uh, I mean, it's... I think it's... For me, it sounds better than the original. Um, which I know is sort of fighting talk, and usually you end up with some uh, obscene comments in the uh, comment section when you say something like that. But I, I think it's probably the best cover that Dexes have done, and they've done quite a few uh, over the course of these albums and B-sides and what have you. Um, but that has got a great vibe. And uh, also, I like both sides now. I think it showcases uh, Kevin Rowland's voice possibly better than any other of their albums. Um, it doesn't have a voice to everybody's taste, so I think he has a, certainly an interesting voice. I think he's got a great voice. Um, so I think uh, Let the Record Show is uh, worth, I think, three and a half. I'm giving okay. it uh, three and a half stars. Um, and the reason it's not higher is it is just a cover's a covers album and there's plenty of original material that I'm sure everybody's going to have higher up the list. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I think it's hard to rank a covers album high, isn't it? You know, there's maybe the odd exception. You know, Colin, you, you mentioned uh, Grazing in the Grass. That's one of these songs where I, I always think that the star part is the, the backing vocals. The backing vocals are like everything on that song to me. Do you know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's, a, it's a really well-produced song. Backing yeah. vocals are... The backing vocals are great. Um, talks a little bit about videos and things. It has a, a a wonderful video full of older people dancing, which sort of appeals to me now. I'm not looking for young people, young people dancing in pop videos anymore. Um, but it, it, it's sort of real celebration. In terms of the mood, it has a summer vibe. It has a real vibe, graze, uh, grazing in the grass. Um, and... Uh, I, I'd like the version of both sides now, the Joni Mitchell uh, cover as well, and oh. Carrick Fergus has been has been mentioned. Um, there are good covers there. It's it's a good album. Right, well, good choice there. My number five is the Feminine Divine. It's uh, oh, it's it is as Ian rightly says. Yeah, he's nicked off my words there. It's an album of two halves. <laughs> And I've got Philly Soul on one side with a bit of Northern Soul. And then the second side, I'm going to describe it as contemporary Barry White. Uh, it's It's got that, I love the groove on the whole of side two. I love the production of side two. It's modern, it, it but it, it's it's still got a retro feel to it, hence the Barry White reference. And Barry White always had that lush sound, didn't he, with the strings, with Love, love Unlimited. And this has got a real feel about it. I really love the, I love the production on it. I would actually hope that if they were doing another album and he's talking about doing another album very soon, which is would be unusual, I hope it's more that sound, more the side two sound and a little bit, a little bit different and coming away from the traditional sound, doing something a bit different. So I, I would love that. Uh, it's 
again, as you've said there, the, the opening song's very bouncy. The one that loves you, it's, it's old school Dexies, really. Uh, then it's all right, Kevin, which is the re-recording of Manhood. And if you watch our top ten show, Manhood, the original version, which I I, I love it for personal reasons, is in is in my is in my top two or three Dexys tunes. I just I absolutely love it. As I said on the other show, it just reminds me of being my 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 uh, eldest daughter being very very little and us dancing around the room on a regular basis to it. So, but I do really, really like the re-recorded version. I think it fits in perfectly. And Roland's vocals are top draw. I'm going to get free, excellent, up tempo. So as Ian says, first it's really up tempo. Then, I, then you know, other things like I love the my goddesses groove, which you mentioned. So uh, I love. Uh, I'm going to get free. Another up tempo song. I love the groove on my goddess is. Then uh, goddess rules is is it. it it's touch odd, as Ian said, but it's really good. I think my it, my submission is one of the most beautiful songs Kevin Rowland's ever sang. His his falsetto is just remarkable. It's it's the voice, some of the notes. As a singer myself, with a very similar sort of uh, tone and range, bizarrely, his 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 notes are just impeccable. It's just marvelous. When I first heard it, I thought, "Oh, this is sublime." And then, do the, you think the, that? Do you, sorry to interrupt. Do you think that song? Um, is this album's version of it's okay, John Joe? Yes, I do. I do. I think it is because you can you can see the similarities, can't you? It's oh, yeah. the same singular notes, and the, the, yeah, without without a doubt. Um, and then the last one is Dance with Me, and I've got written down here. It's got a great Marvin Gaye type groove to it. I, I really love it. I think it's a lovely song to finish the album with. It's a fab. It's a fab song. Really good album. It's, it's an excellent album. I've got it down at four stars. It may go up over time, but at the minute, I've got it down at four stars. So it's an excellent album. Really, really top draw. So I'm at four stars already. So uh, <laughs> where have you got in at number four, Ian? Number four, I've got uh, One Day I'm Gonna Sow. I'm Going to Sow. Um, and I've, I've, I've had this album for a long time. In fact, you, you give us this uh, album years ago yeah. and I never, re I never really got into it that much I, I did listen to it but it's only after going through these songs again to review for for this show that all of a sudden I got absolutely hooked and I thought why didn't I why didn't I see this before um I, I, I kind of thought I've, I've missed the boat here you know it was like um <laughs> it was just it was um I, I was playing it over and over again, thinking, this is much better than I remembered. Um, it's got a proper Dexy sound. There's a, there's a very strong lineup, um, in particular, Neil Hubbard's on it. Um, Mick Talbot um, as well, of course. Yes, I. Um, and some of the earlier, because uh, he was the early Dexy. He, he was. He was in one of the lineups, about 81, I think it was. Why? So they've got a few ex-members back for, for, for this uh, song uh, um, or uh, Pete, Pete Williams and um, Big Jimmy again yep. um, and um, I, I, I like the uh, the linked songs you know when, when he uh, he's, he's kind of analysing himself and then he, he he's, he's, he's got this attraction to, the, to this woman and, and then he's, it's the chase um, and then he's getting the girl, and then it's it's kind of mutual love, and it's all done in a in a sort of within the space of this a couple of songs. All of a sudden, he he's like, oh, well, I've got the woman now, but I don't know if I really want her. You know, it was, <laughs> yeah. like, it was all about the chase, and like <laughs> I think I've made a mistake. Sorry, love. And then, <laughs> and then there's like the next couple of songs. Well, that song and the next one are all the. Uh, arguments to and fro which i think really <laughs> work, works really well but at the time i just didn't i don't know i didn't it didn't grab me um and finishing off with them agreeing that he's incapable of love um so i i, I think it's quite novel the way the way that uh, those songs one leads into the to the next one there is a link um telling a story there um, it's, it is the closest that they get to a concept album, I think, isn't it? Aye, yeah, it is. 
and I don't know how personal it was for uh, for 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 Kevin Rowland or whether it was you know just based on a lot of experiences. But um, uh, I started getting I started getting obsessed with a particular song. I'm thinking of you, which is is just to me. I love Al Green. This yeah. is totally Al Green. It's got the driving drum beat, um, the, the arpeggiated string section, the the um, and the guitars, um, and the, like a Hammond, Hammond organ sound. Uh, it's just total soul. But I, I I was listening to this a few times, and then it was on um, it was on my phone, and I'm and the credits started rolling, and then I nearly spat my drink out because it said um, vocals. Uh, Kevin Rowland, Vic Bino, and I'm like, gee, that, what? Vic's the singer of, of our band, like, you know, soul um, funk band that, uh, and I'm like, so I had to text him, saying, I can't believe it, but he's doing all the background, um, uh, you know, the background, oh, 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 that sort of uh, backing singing, and uh, it was just a total coincidence, and um yeah, I, I, I absolutely love that song. Um, I, another highlight is she she got a wiggle, um, and the song "Me," where he's at the party, um, questioning, "Well, oh, is this it? Is this it?" And he's just he, he's in the middle of this party, and he's just like, "There's got to be more to this than than life than this." And he just wants to be out of there. And uh, I think we've probably all been in social situations that you're just like tearing your hair out thinking, no, I need to be away from here. It's, it's, but, interesting, um, it's interesting what you say about um, Kevin Rowland, how much of it is him. And I think he's one of these songwriters, a little bit like Nick Lowe, a little bit like Andy Partridge. And you listen and you think, how much is him? And how much is an invented invented character? Yeah. Um, and there are lots of references to, you know, there are, there's more than one song that references Kevin in the in the lyric. Uh, there are several songs where he sort of forms monologues and what have you. And you get to feel when you're listening to him that it's probably more him than it is an invented character. Uh, well, I, I, would, I would say so because he actually talks about he's not he's he's never really loved before, and then it comes onto that the last album, the latest album, when he sort of refers back to that, doesn't he? You know, he says I've never really loved before. So there's there is that sort of linear line running through in terms of the themes. I think. <laughs> oh, I think they're right. Anyway, I give that four and a half stars. Right, all oh, right, we're right up there, four and a half. Yeah. Excellent, excellent, Colin. Okay, so but what I have at number four is I've got the feminine divine, which has already been uh, mentioned mentioned by you both. Yeah, very much a, a, an album of in the old fashioned mold, you know, a side one and a, a, and a side two uh, that are that are different. Um, I I didn't like the uh, the synths so much on it. I thought it suffered from a bit of overproduction a little yeah. bit. Um, and was didn't have the sort of rawness that I would like, but I think those songs, especially for me, it's the side one. It's the more soulful sort of grooves uh, that appeal to me, rather than the um, than the sort of side two, the sort of you know more electronic side. It's interesting, uh, that because I preferred the side two. So that's that's it's fascinating to see the differences there. Sorry, Colin, go on, carry on. Yeah, I just I just feel as though. Um, I'll be sort of repeating what what you said about uh, a few of these things, but um, it, it's I, I'm going to get free. I think has got this great, you know, the brass is back with uh, with that song. So you know, the the album kicks off with a sort of brass sound that that attracted me to, as we were saying at the beginning, attracted me to Dex's in the first place. So it's hearing that brass. That makes me think, yeah, this is uh, this is worthwhile. Um, I think I might have been a bit stingy and only giving it three and a half stars. Right, but three and that's... a half, three and a half is what I've given. And uh, no, you, yeah, there's there's no right or wrong, Colin. You've got to go with your gut, and if you think it's three and a half, then three and a half it is. Um, well, you know the um, I'm going to get free. You know what it reminds me of? It's it's kind of 
to me, it's it's tell me when my light turns green. There's a lot of the um, chords and, and structure that it just remind the tune reminds me of tell me when my light turns green. I don't know whether you. I hadn't thought that consciously, but I will go back and give it a listen. And without wanting to give anything away to people that haven't seen uh, seen the top ten top ten songs with the same artist. Um, well, without giving too much away, tell me when my light turns green is is somewhere in my top ten. <laughs> so I will go back. I will go back. Maybe there's something that I hadn't realised there. Yeah, so I will go back and give that a listen. Yeah, it definitely. Yeah, I can see that. Well, my number four, Ian, we're, we're sort of running parallel lines here at the moment because my, my number four is One Day I'm Going to Saw and I've also given it four and a half stars. I think it's a classic album. It's very much a musical. Uh, I saw it twice. I saw it in uh, Gateshead Sage and I saw it at the Whitley Bay Playhouse, which to this day is one of the greatest gigs I've ever been to. I just thought it was fabulous on, on both occasions. Uh, Madeline Highland, I think the lady was called. Uh, she was fabulous. It worked really well as a sort of musical. It is a musical performance, this album for me. And she was fantastic in it. It worked so, so well. It really did. I think it worked better live than the current album did, did live, to be brutally honest. This was much more of a production piece and it was fabulous. It's a, it's a, as I say, it's a really good album. Very up tempo start. You know, you've got now. Well, as you see these one word titles, Blasts In, uh, Lost is a fabulous soul ballad. Uh, me is also a beautiful song about vulnerability. I love, I really love me. I really do. Uh, she, she's got a wiggle, just that fabulous funk groove. Uh, and I love when her vocals come in, Madeline Highland's vocals come in when she says, I'm mad about you. It's a really fabulous juxtaposition. It works superbly. I'm also going to love you. Humorous. I, 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 one complaint I've got about the, the, the album is that one song is the drums. It, they sound, it all sounds like it's been recorded in one room together, which is great on most occasions if you want a live feel, but I think this could have been a better produced song. It needed to be like a snappier sound on the drum kick, you know. That's maybe me being a bit, you know, maybe a bit over the top about it, but I just thought the production could have been better on that song. Which one? Uh, the, the she, she Got a Wheel? No, no, I'm Always Gonna Love You. The, the, oh, as you know, the drums always just sound like they're, they sound like they're literally in the room with everybody else. It's for, for an occasion, I'd rather have been separated and have a snappier snare, is what I've written down. Nowhere is home, great song about being free. Free, <laughs> up tempo, and a great song. But It's Okay, John Joe is is probably my highlight on the album. Uh, it's about not being able to love. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful song. He's singing is majestic. It's really, really, you know, it's stripped back. It's he just does it beautifully. All I, the, the best compliment I, I can say is, in his peak, Brian Ferry couldn't have sung it as well as this. Or if he did, it would have been, it couldn't have done it any better. Put it that way, you know, like Song for Europe, for me, it's like when Ferry's voice is probably at his peak. And this is probably <laughs> up there with that sort of feel. It's beautiful, really is. And then again, the ending has a like a, a bookends theme. It comes back in the beginning again to finish the album. So it's almost like a stage musical. You go back to the beginning, you've got the overture estate sort of thing at the end. It's a terrific album, really, really good album. I play it every now and again, and I really enjoy it. It's an album I can't play one song. You can't just pick a dip in and dip a track. You've got to play the whole thing. It's one of those albums, play the whole thing in a circular structure. It's fabulous, four and a half stars. A terrific album, One Day I'm Going to Saw, 2012. So, Ian, what have you got at number three? Number three, I might be lynched, but I've got Searching for the Young Soul Rebels. Um, You're going to be lynched. Yeah, lynched. <laughs> Full on bet lynched. <laughs> <laughs> That's one for the older viewers, and if you're in America, you'll have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean... Well, I, I, I mean, I may, may as well give it away now that the, the three, these three albums are all, I've got five stars for them all. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter from now on. Yeah. I've got this one uh, there. I do, I, I, you know, I absolutely love it. Um, but it's probably, it was, I, I, I got into this album after I got into Tour IA. So that's probably why I've got this one before that. Um, it's, uh, it's a obviously it's a 
a, at the time it must have been a fresh sound like a call to arms um the the, the horns are superb on it the, 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 they've got great arrangements on it and harmonies um this i believe this was the first incarnation of dexy's correct me if i'm wrong um but it's like it's got a it's got soulful mournful desperate scathing uplifting all sorts of different feelings on this album um and it again as i say it, it passed me by it was b before i got into them but um highlights i've got burn it down tell me when my light turns green i'm just looking keep it there they my idea which i believe we might have covered like yeah we did on our first <laughs> Not our first gig, but one of our early gigs, we used to do there. There, my idea, we do like weird songs like "Lady" by Adam and the Ants. Yeah, yeah. We'd do "Mirror in the Bathroom." We did uh, there, there, my idea. Normally, die on our ass, um, and we'd have the look as well. Because you remember rightly, I used to wear I, I like had a black donkey type jacket with a rolled up cap on as well. Oh, you did, I. We famously went into the pub, Sergeant Peppers walked in and people started shouting Gino. <laughs> anyway, I digress and do apologise. Go on, Ian. That's all right. Um, some of the highlights, of I'm just looking, I think is brilliant. Um, I'm not going into too much detail about the songs because you've done them on the uh, the top 10, but but that starts off like whispering and mournful, gets to desperation and then it... it it gets to a, a peak and then it starts to, to to simmer down again with mournful and then back to the whisper. But the, the, the keyboards are absolutely superb on that. Um, I couldn't help it if I tried. Uh, great horn arrangements on that and a bass-led sound. Um, and probably one of my favourite titles of any song ever. Going back from what you were saying there, uh, Colin, um, about when it was one word titles. What about thankfully not living in Yorkshire, it doesn't apply? <laughs> I don't know what the hell it's about, but it's like <laughs> it's a fun song, lighthearted, and um and also keep it, which was reworded for a uh, for a single, but I think it bombed and that was the a lot of the original members started started leaving after that. But yeah, five stars, superb album. Colin, what have you got in at number three? Uh, I've got Two Rye at number three. It's a wonderful selection of songs which, for which the brass and the strings sort of come together like they do, like probably on no, on no other of, of their albums. I think they get the balance. In terms of the balance of the sound, I think this is the best sounding uh, Dex's album. To you know the strings and and and, and the horns together. And it is now with the new remaster because the new remaster is absolutely fantastic. It sounds brilliant now. It's really warmer and beautifully mixed. Really much much better. Is but this yeah. another album I have to go out and buy? Then it's it's they, they did remaster it and they've remixed it and they've changed little elements as well. So for example, one of the songs you've got there. The, there's like a pipe on it and Billy, Big Jimmy's gone back on it and put the trombone on it and it just sounds brilliant now it's it's a beautiful mix it's not often you think a mix makes such a difference but it does it really does on this it's too right here as it should have sounded I think it's something along those lines it's a fantastic mix I can't recommend it enough but go on Colin sorry uh, yeah, I, I think um, again something that's been mentioned on the uh, songs uh, but I will mention it as a song because I think it, it sums up the album is let's make this precious because it has the perfect blend of horns and strings and it's upbeat and it's danceable and it is life affirming. Um, it, is, it is a wonderful song that, that sort of sums up the whole album. There's various, there's a, sort of other things with Two Rye. It starts with a, starts with the Celtic Soul Brothers um, and it starts with a statement. And the statement is, we are not what we're about on our previous album, although they've retained the good elements. And the statement is, we, you know, we are the Celtic Soul Brothers, and this is what we sound like now. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't disappoint from Celtic Soul Brothers going forward. It has that sound that I can't feel that anybody else has captured that sound at all in terms of the brass and the strings together. 
So I'm giving it in terms of points and what have you. Um, I'm giving that four and a half. Right. Okay. So a big jump, four and a half stars. Well, we've all got different albums at number three because I've got "Don't Stand Me Down" at number three. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to base this on the director's cut edition, which is slightly different, got an extra track on it, and it has been mixed quite quite differently as well. At this point in 1985, they'd had a little hiatus, but in, in, in terms of the charts, three years is a massive amount of time. So their popularity had dwindled quite significantly, I think, in terms of the charts. And you were down to Kevin Rowland, Billy Adams, Helen O'Hara and Nick Gatfield. And of course, Big Jimmy sort of co-writing and playing trombone on the album. Uh, it, it's a fantastic album. I'm going to get, like Ian, everything now is five-star territory. So it's a five-star album. It really is a great, it's a, it's a great album. It really is. It starts off really well in terms of the, the, the new version with the Kevin Rowland's 13th time, which is like a manifesto. I'm Kevin Rowland, leader of the band. It's quite humorous. Uh, quite soulful. However, I still prefer Occasional Flicker, uh, the original opening, because I just think it's great with a little fade in. Very few good albums start with a fade, and this works brilliantly. The musicianship's terrific. I love the space on it, as well as the rest of the album. Other tracks on it, of course, I've, I've said in the top ten, two of these tracks actually feature in my top ten Dexy songs. What She Like, I've just got written down here, uh, one of the greatest songs ever written. His, his love song for Helen O'Hara. There is another great love song about for Helen O'Hara on here as well, which is I Love You. Brilliant. National Pride is fantastic. I absolutely love the pedal steel and the violin playing is exquisite. It's a terrific, great song. Uh, there's a couple of songs that I think are, are, are good, very good, but they don't blow me away. So Reminisce Part 2 is decent, just goes on a little bit, I think. Um, one of these things is okay. It's clearly based on Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon, which who gets later on gets a, a songwriting credit as it happens. And the album finishes beautifully with the waltz, with Woody Woodman's these beautiful laid back and understated drums. So this album, it, it's not a mixed album. It, it is. There's nothing that's on this album that's not very good, at least. But in some cases, the, the highs are so high, uh, they, they, they eclipse anything up just about anything that they've done. So it is a it's a top draw album and it's a five star album for me. There you go. Ian, what have you got at number two? Number two, um I've got two uh, two right here. Um for reasons I've stated before, this was the first album that I really got into. And I was really surprised that uh you know I'd I'd had the I'd had a couple of singles for, for a few years and it was probably about nineteen eighty seven that I bought the um C D at the time. And I couldn't believe how um, I kind of missed all the, you know, it was the rest of the album was a lot more complex than the singles were. And um, there's not a bad song on there. It's, it's to me, it's it's the ultimate Dexy sound, I think, as, as Colin was saying. They've got the blend of instruments completely right. Um, and it, you know, it was, Big Jimmy was still in there, but it was the kind of, he was getting edged out and it, and it was, I think um, Kevin Rowland introduced the, the strings as the the Emerald Express, as yeah. like an, an addition to, to Dexy's. The full title, I think, of the band at the time was Kevin Rowland and Dexy's Midnight Runners with the Emerald Express. <laughs> well, I think, the, I think the Emerald Express was just a way of getting the strings into the band because he what he obviously wanted that sound, but um, Big Jimmy must have felt he was getting pushed further and further to uh, to the side, and he, he I think he left pretty much after after this album st almost straight away. He, he's not even on the um, on the photograph of the uh, the band on the in the inner sleeve. Um, I think it's perfectly crafted. Um, and it's 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 it, the whole album's got a got a feel to it, um, and a blend of moods and styles, Celtic roots, country soul and pop. Um, again, I wrote down some of the some of the re re type renamed um, members of the band. Mick Gallick became Georgio Kilkenny, Helen <laughs> Bowden became Helen O'Hara, Steve. 
Sean, I think, became Steve Brennan, and Roger Huckle became Roger McDuff. So he <laughs> went right full on Celtic. Full, full for it. I mean, Helen O'Hara, as I said before, is a proper. This doesn't get more Celtic than that, does it? You know. But um, he, uh, I think Kevin was quite controlling of the barn, and that there was all sorts of rules about like not drinking before gigs, and 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 uh, I was in a, a I was in a like a, a group chat recently where one of the the guys who uh, used to play sax on their on their tour, um, he he, re he relayed the the song the sorry the story of when they were. Uh, back in uh, David Bowie and uh, oh yeah, it's an infamous oh, story. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he said at the time, the rest of the band were like, "Yeah, stick it to the man." And he sat there thinking, "Are you crazy? This is our bread and butter. You can't do this." And basically, the whole thing was pulled, you know. And that was the yeah. He's, a, he's apologized years later and yeah. he accepted it's not a big deal. It's just one of them stupid things you do when you're young and think you're uh, the bee's knees. But uh, a funny, funny story is we've got a friend who, who, who he says, "Oh yeah, Dexy's the, the you know the, there's a few songs where they they're the swearing quite a bit." I says, "Oh, he says, yeah, he's that, you know the 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 Celtic Soul Brother starts with oh piss off, thank you." I says, "No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's like it's a thank you, like you know." <laughs> but the, but the other one, the other one that he got was like you mentioned the occasional. Flicker from yep. the uh, the other album, and he he misread the title and he thought it was the occasional fucker, <laughs> <laughs> which is quite a good album. <laughs> but the highlights to me, um, one last wild waltz, old plan B slash I'll show you, which is a perfect uh, yeah space between the two. You, you can't segue perfectly into the other one, doesn't it? Lie as it. A to e, until I believe in my soul and come on, Eileen. Controversially, I totally um, disagree with your uh, your remix. I don't like it. Oh, shut up, man! It's oh, much better. It's much nah, better. You, you listen to songs like um, "Soon" and the original mix. I know the original mix was a little bit muddy in the uh, mid band, but I think the the new mix has lost a lot in in the mid range. Um, and on on particularly on soon, the original is is vocals and piano. Now it sounds like the piano has been pushed to the studio next door. You know, it's miles away. It's it's. No, I much prefer the plan, new mix. I really plan, do. Plan B is very very bass driven. You know, and it's got excitement. The the new one, the bass is cut back a bit, and and I just don't think it's got the same excitement. So um, yeah, I, I I disagree with you on that, but, but I love the album anyway. So yeah, five star. Colin, what have you got at number two? At number two, I've got "Don't Stand Me Down." Um, again, to add a little to to what's been said already, I think that this is where uh, the first time the the songs became not just pop songs. You know, they were three minute pop songs before. This album came along, and then you had things like "Sprawling in the Five, Six Minutes." Uh, it was a lot more expansive. Um, the only downside to that is if there's a song you don't like, you're stuck with it for that little bit longer. But I, but the majority of the album, uh, say, there's probably not a lot more I can add. Uh, but it is great. It is fantastic. This is what she's like. It's, it's wonderful, um, and. Uh, it's well worth, I think, four and a half stars. Okay, interesting. We're all going to have different. Uh, all going to have different out number ones. Yeah, it's going to be interesting <laughs> to see what the, the overall ranking comes out. I think there's going to be three of them. Well, my number two is uh, searching for the Young Soul Rebels. If you watch my debut album show, this actually comes in the top three greatest debut albums of all time. So it shows you how high I rate this album. It's it's just an incredible album, as we said before. The whole brass thing was an absolute game changer. It's got the feel of punk rock about it without the guitars. It's brilliant. I, I love the opening with Burn It Down. You've got Purple, you've got Pistols, you've got the specials. And turn off the radio, for God's sake, Burn It Down. Brilliant. The band just commented it. It's absolutely amazing. 
just blows your socks off. The whole album's amazing. Tell me, like, when, when we like turns green, great. Exploring the themes of struggle. I love the instrumental, the team that meet in cuffs. I mean, what a bizarre title. <laughs> but great. Uh, I'm just looking, as Ian rightly said there before, there's just fabulous. The emotional aspect of it, I think it's on my top 10 songs thing, as is Gino. And so go and watch that with for our discussion on Gino, which which is a great, just a great pop song, isn't it? Uh, and, you know, his whole chairman and the board, General Johnson brrr, thing as well. Seven Days Too Long was a great cover of the old Chuck Wood Northern Soul song. Couldn't help but I tried. Brilliant. I, I think that's in my top ten. And, and I love the relationship, the, the dissonance between the horns coming in and out and the sheer power struggle within it. Thankfully, not living in Yorkshire, Brill. Keep it. But an inferiority complex it was, was my interpretation. But Kevin Rowland's lyrics are really hard to sort of decipher at times. And then, as you, as you mentioned before, we used to do There, There, My Dear, so it holds a very special place in my heart. It is just, it is a great song. I love the, I love the lyrics. You can hear his voice on the album. He's clearly influenced by Ferry and Bowie. You can tell he's got that, but he's different again. He's, he's got his own voice. He, he's not a copycat like some of the artists at the time. He's got his own distinctive vocal sound. I love the literature references on the album. And again, the, the deluxe edition is fantastic because of the fact that they release all the other tracks that they originally recorded as well when they nicked all the tapes. And there's actually another album's worth of brilliant material that could have been on it. It's it, it's You can't recommend it enough. It could, this could have been an incredible double album opener, which would have been just ridiculous. And it would have been five stars. It's, it's that good. It's that good an album. Yet... Such is the quality of their, their albums. This still comes second for me at the minute. And it was literally a toss of a coin. It, it, it's, I spoke to my mate about it and said, what do you think? I, I said, I think I'm going to go down this route. I was talking to Simon Ian, and, uh, and he said, oh, he said, I, I agree. He said, that's the, the route I would go down. And uh, so, yeah, I've, got, I've gone with that. I think it's probably a, just about right. Uh, so I've got this in at number two, two right here, five stars. If I could give it six, I would. So what have you got at number one in the end? Um, I've, number one, I've got Don't Stand Me Down. Um, and uh, I was going to have this at number two till till a few hours ago. <laughs> and, um, I was going to put two right here down just because it was the, to me, it was the ultimate Dexy sound. It's, it, it was the, you know, the classic uh, kind of feel. But then I played it again and I thought, you know what, I Although not all the songs are um, are on par, I just think the peaks are just probably the best stuff that he's ever produced. Um, I didn't actually listen to this for a long, long time because the album cover put me off. It's a it, terrible cover, isn't it? The original Steve's it's terrible. The worst them. album covers I've ever seen in my life, and I think I, I love the. Um, the hillbilly kind of uh, get up that they had for the for the um, you know Tour I album. So to see like a um, like a nineteen eighties law firm on the front of a and even the colours of, of yeah. the it's just one of the it's I think it's a PR disaster the um, the. the the front cover. Well, I'll, I'll put on the screen here, folks. You can see the two different versions. You got the original version and then the director's cut version, which yeah. is far Direct brighter and nicer. Better. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, and, and and not only that, but it was just like the fact that the photograph was four members, and it was like I like the fact that it was a big, big uh, band, a big sound. So it was years until I until I uh, first listened to it, and I think you probably give us the uh, loan of the cassette of it, of it. and. Um, you know, I, I instantly got into it, and um, these uh, these songs are probably, I think, me some of my favourite songs. Um, my I think my favourite all time song, Dexys, is is the the closing song, the Walls. Right, I think Woody Wooden is he? Absolutely beautiful. Um, I I just love it, and I think it's it's structured so well, and uh, it, it's. It's got quite a the, the strings give it like a, a um, 
reminiscent sort of um, feel to it, and um, it's it really is beautiful. Um, but the, it's not the only one on the on the album that, that is like that. The, um, the 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 slide guitar, the the the, the country sound, and the, and the strings on on the on the album, I think, are absolutely yeah uh, yeah luscious, you know. Um, um, I, I, pace changes throughout the album, um, but knowledge knowledge of beauty is that the one that got re retitled. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great uh, that's a great song too, and what she, what she like, I like the it it was this kind of, I don't know if this was the start of the conversation uh, conversation type songs with uh, him and 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 Billy um, Billy Adams Billy Adams, but um, it's it, it makes you smile when I when I hear it, and and he's um, he's he's taught. He, Billy comes in and he thinks he gets paranoid. He thinks they're talking about, and then, and then it, it switches to to his, his new girlfriend and asking what 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 she's like. Um, there were no singles from this album, but um, well, I what she's like was released as a twelve inch. Because um, I used to, I used to, yeah, I used to have it, and it was a, an abbreviated version of the of this of the album version, but it was still about eight minutes. <laughs> you know? um, Wasn't as good though. But this this is the one where it's it's largely ignored by by the general public, um, and I think more people should listen to this one. Um, it's turned into a cult classic, though, hasn't it? It's one of those yeah. that features in albums you must listen to, Jorts. Yeah, and I think if if they're playing live, if they play any of these songs, they they would go down a, a storm. Yeah, the um, date of the two thousand and twelve, the dates they played a couple of them. You know, uh, what she like, I love you, and that they, they they've done them. And they, they went down an absolute storm because uh, what you like, the play at the Whitley Bay Playhouse, and it's one of the best things. It's in it's in the top ten live songs I've ever seen. It just tore the roof off. It really did. The bit when it goes when the brass comes in, one, two, three, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the place went mental. It pr yeah. proper took off. It was absolutely brilliant. Um, yeah, I wish I'd seen that. Like, um, uh, just. Just as an aside, I um, as, a, as a real tangential point, uh, I don't think it's the worst album cover of all time. Um, there is an album by Millie Jackson called Back to the Shit, and that is the worst album cover of all time, which <laughs> it looks like you're already getting your phone out to <laughs> see what that looks like. But that is worse than uh, the original uh, of Don't Stand Me. Uh, yeah, well, there are there are a few worse album sleeves. I mean, as it uh, was it Black Sabbath Born Again or whatever it was called, terrible album with Ian Gillan singing. What a, a decent album, a reasonable album, but terrible cover. The worst, probably the worst sleeve I've ever seen. But so there are worse. And uh, Highway, which I've mentioned on one of our other shows, by Free is a great album, but nobody knows the band's free on it. But that's another story. Uh, yeah, great. It's it's also what was interesting about that album, Ian, is um, they they were trying to get they, they kept saying to different drummers, "Can you sound like the drummer out of Al Green?" And in the end, they got the drummer out of Al Green's band, Tim Dancy, to play drums on it. So they actually ended up just hiring him. That's that's amazing because because they they obviously carried that sound on to to um to the the uh, oh what do you call it. Um, one day I'm going to sew because there's a few tracks on there where it's that driving uh, Al Green type uh, drum beat, which works really well. And I love it as well. Um, well interestingly, I Woody Woodman's, he said he recorded a number of songs when he did the, the, the one song on the album, The Waltz. But in his book, he talks about recording a number of tracks and they've never been released. So he's, Woody Woodman's, he's definitely on an album's worth of material by the sounds of it. Well, yeah. I think. It, I think it was like two years in in the in the make in that album, yeah. you know, um, and there were stories about the try to the try to the try to nick the tape for that as well. <laughs> I think, I think they, they were taking too long uh, mixing it, and the, the, the record company weren't going to pay for any more. <laughs> yeah. so nick it and take it to their own studio. Where <laughs> but it also survived the fire from the. Um, the office block below, I think, in, in right. New York. So oh, I didn't know that. He, he, he was he was thinking that all this work was was going to go up in smoke, literally. But um, anyway, yeah. Um, 
five stars. In, uh, <laughs> after, top after Ian's numerous uh, ventures off sideways, Colin, what have you got at number one? I've got, well, uh, the process of elimination will tell you it's searching for the young salt rebels. Uh, it starts with, again, similar to Tura, it starts with, the, uh, with that statement uh, in, on burn it down, um, saying this is what we're about. Uh, the reason why it's at number one, the reason why it's, it's, it's a definite five stars, I mean, there's, there's, there's no doubt about it, is because of its consistently, it's consistently uplifting all the way through. It doesn't have any weaknesses. Where uh, Don't Stand Me Down sort of has peaks and troughs and has really high peaks. I th I like the consistency of uh, searching for the Young Soul Rebels. I think it's just starts top quality, it stays top quality. Um, it was my introduction to Dexys, as we said at the beginning, uh, which, and you go out when you're sort of 12, 13, you go, you buy an album, on the basis of the singles uh, that you've that you've heard, and I'd heard Gino and maybe one or two others. Can't remember the sequencing. And to get it home and find that there are songs on there you prefer, and there are loads of songs you prefer the single that you bought it for, uh, give it a sort of personal resonance. Also, I never tire, never tire of it. I could say could have picked out any day between 1980 i think it was released 1980 yeah, it was, yeah. and today and it would have sounded brilliant even though i've been through sort of highs and lows this has remained sort of consistent in my life it's a five star album and uh ian is going to be lynched for not putting it uh <laughs> not, putting, not putting it at number one uh yeah. super yeah it's, so, it's... do you um think that uh in terms of uh song titles it's the most difficult one to, to tie a title to the actual tune. A lot of them I, don't. I have trouble tying titles to tunes of, um, you know, of, of most songs. So right. possibly, yeah, I'm, I, yeah I, I don't have a good memory for the titles of songs. Because a lot of the titles don't kind of... Don't make any sense. No, or fit in with the tune, you know? Yeah, it's uh, quite amusing. Um, uh, well, anyway, my number one is Two Right Here, and it's literally just just ahead of Searching for the Young Soul Rebels. Came out in 1982. I love the 2022 As It Should Sound mix. Ignore Ian's comments. It is warm. It sounds much better. Uh, I love the opening. Celtic Soul Brothers, as, as Colin rightly said, it's like a manifesto of what the album's going to sound like. If that was our old sound, this is us. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Celtic Soul Brothers. It just sounds great. Uh, the, whole, the whole album's brilliant. As you see, Colin rightly said, Let's Make This Precious, just a great song. Uh, all in all, one last waltz Kevin wrote about the relationship with his dad, and he, he put the pictures on the screen on the latest tour with him and his dad at the end, and it, it was lovely, actually. Uh, Jackie Wilson said, we, we've all seen the... <laughs> we all watched the episode of Top of the Pops with Jockey Wilson, <laughs> the darts player, in the background, and I love the fact that they mocked themselves on the recent tour and put the big picture of Jockey Wilson on the screen as well. That was fabulous. I loved that. And I believe, I believe, and I remember listening to this on the radio somewhere, that originally it was going to be a duet with Van Morrison. I believe Van has got his, his voice down somewhere on it, but they just took him off. I, I believe that's the case. Please oh. correct me if I'm wrong, folks. That's just something that I sort of remember in the background. So if I'm talking rubbish, please let me know. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Uh, other things, old, as I've written on the top 10 show, just incredible vocals. The vocals are brilliant. Everything about this is just stupendous, about getting all the challenges and all the rest of it. It's just fabulous. Plan B, again, great. I love, again, the Emerald Express, Helen O'Hara is just fabulous on this album. It's brilliant. It's just a different version. I love the segue into the next song from Plan B. Uh, we mentioned this again on the other show with the top 10 Plan B does feature the other version of the brass, brass version which is just as good as this version right, I love the way it segues into you know I'll show you uh, I'll show you it's like the sad you know the, um, the the new remix yes I think he's it went from originally all brass to, to kind of all strings but now he's I do agree he's blended it more so there's 
brass and str or, yeah. or hold and string on yeah. this version. Probably that is probably better. Yeah. I thought we we're gonna have another sort of sound fight there, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I'll show you it's a sad song about the negative effects of school and society can have for people. Great. Liars A to A. Again, I believe it's an attack on journalists, but I could be wrong. So I believe in me so so uh, it's one of those songs where you listen to it and all of a sudden this mad jazz interlude comes on. And I'm thinking, what the hell is that? And it, it works perfectly. It shouldn't do, but it works absolutely perfectly. And then you have the the little the new version with the trombone on it, and then it sort of yeah, and then come on, Eileen, uh, which is just a fabulous way to go. You know, it's just a perfect pop song. You know that whole young love thing and all that. It's just a great song, great, great song. We've and as you say, we've danced to it a million times. You know, everybody's danced to it. We've all done the dance hands behind your back, spin round on the dance floor. Brilliant song. So five star album, one of the best albums. In fact, both albums, two of the best albums of the nineteen eighties. By a country mile, but three of those three of the best arms in the nineteen eighties, just just remarkable, great great band. So folks, it's, I'm going to have to do the adding up and work out which album we've picked at the at the top. I think it's a three way tie. <laughs> 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 the way that it works yeah, out. Before he ends up let, let the record show us don't go on after that. <laughs> <laughs> like. So folks, if you want to leave your comments below, I'm sure you will. Let us know your thoughts, your 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 listens, and whether we should have put the other two other two albums on as well. So until the next time, from Ian, Colin, and myself, take care. Look after yourself. It's been a pleasure. We'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.